history You hear about this and you read about that I don't want to look at Grumpy Cat This is how to watch TV What's that I hear? You hit the lost finale It's not your fault that you can't see what we see This is how to watch TV I'll come up in network This is how to watch TV I'll come up in network The Leftovers with Joel and Jeremy. My name is Joel, and that is Jeremy, who was just cut off mid-sentence. We're in the middle of the conversation. <laughs> but we're brought to you by Comeuppance Network. You can check out all of our social media links at thisishowtowatchtv.com and email us directly at thisishowtowatchtv at gmail.com to discuss The Leftovers or any other TV-related issues you might have. Um, you can also interact with us on the Twitter. Yes, also, so, this holiday season and year-round, please use our Amazon link. Also on thisishowtowatchtv.com. Okay, so this was an episode of television that occurred. And before we get into that, I wanted to go to my favorite Reddit on Reddit for the week. Okay. Uh, I, I've just kind of nailed it down to one thing. And uh, that being not showing on the screen for some reason. Maybe it'll catch up at some point. That would be nice okay. if it did. Anyway, yeah. So somebody, the headline was still trying to figure out the importance of why Marklin Baker faked his departure, submitted four days ago by Nutmeg Tell. I know it's just a small thing and maybe just a point of levity, but they seem to have a reason for everything on this show. I think it was on season two, episode one, and there's a TV on in the background that says the whole Perfect Strangers cast departed, but then Mark was spotted in Mexico. Maybe nothing, but I didn't didn't see anything here much in other places. Here's one link I did find, and wondering if once Kevin gets into a mental institution, if Mark will be there too. I don't know, just a little. The guy from Perfect Strangers, Larry or whatever. Right. Okay. Just why would he have faked his departure? Money. Uh, probably. He probably, did. probably didn't have any money. But how would the money get to him if he faked his departure? No, oh, and maybe just. His career was just over with, and he just wanted to just be like he was gone, and maybe a little grasp at fame. Damon Lindelof said he did a great read, but they had already killed him off, so this is how they were able to fit him in in some way. The, the, he, the, he wanted to do something in season one, but they had already said the whole Perfect Strangers cast had departed. Oh, so they were already gone. So right this there. is how they did it. This is how they got him in there, is he faked it. Okay, so then he can actually appear on the show at some point. Poten I mean, he did. Well, in in a like a news in clip a news or clip, yeah. <clears throat> right? But st I'm talking about as a character on the show. Yeah, he could be. That'd be cool. I mean, I like how they're pulling the old like uh, the old sitcom actors, him and then hell, Eddie Winslow. <laughs> Not big parts, but they're those there. were that one of those <clears throat> was a spinoff of the other. I think fam what? I think Family Matters might have been a spinoff for Perfect Strangers. How? I that's I just heard something about that the other day that those two shows were connected somehow. I wonder if like did were they in Chicago? Maybe maybe it okay, went to Chicago, a cop, a cop, and it was followed uh, his family home, and then we get Steve Urkel. Maybe he yeah. did like a good job on the uh, Family Matters. Julio White I mean, popped I'm, up in a TV commercial. Yeah, just he's in like a uh, it's like a <laughs> uh, a Hyundai commercial or something like that. Weird. Weird. It's like he's here's, like a, here's he, actual Jaleel, Jaleel White and a and a a wax uh, a wax model of of Steve Urkel. And it was like what the <laughs> that's weird. why? He must, and why would you agree to that? <laughs> you Jaleel White? Why would you want to get as far away from Urkel as possible? You would think so. Yeah, I mean, there's some way that I somebody mean, could do an Urkel show that would be hilarious. And not just leaning on the old thing. Like, would it be hilarious, though? I bet th I bet you somebody like a Seth Rogen, for example, could write a Urkel bit that would be funny as hell in 2015. You don't think there could be some way to make the older adult version of it? He wouldn't be the same. He wouldn't be in puberty still. But I bet you there's a way to make a, a present-day Steve Urkel. I mean, that show got out of hand towards the end. You don't, do you remember <laughs> the... No, what happened? No, he made, like, a machine that, like, transformed him into, like, a cool... Oh, Stefan? Like, like yeah, Stefan. Well, of course I remember Stefan. Stefan Urkel. Yeah, yeah, Stefan was badass. Yeah, that was, like, a machine. <laughs> like, I mean, like, come on. Like, wasn't there, like, a time machine at some point in time, too, I think he invented? Like, 
I don't know. It it it, it was good, but it lost its. <laughs> Okay, anyway, well, this, this show starts... This is not a podcast about family matters. It's a podcast about the leftovers. Moving we on. were talking about Eddie Winslow. See, some Connection. Uh, there was no cold open, which was interesting. Was interesting. It just went and straight you, into it. Now, I don't know if I was just paying extra attention okay. to the opening credits, but Go were on. they different? No. Exactly the same. Yeah. This whole season, they've been identical. Are you sure? No, I guess. Because I thought I saw some images in there that we haven't seen yet. But I could. I, maybe I'm just seen? not paying as much attention to the open credits. As I mean. Oh, maybe you hadn't been prior. Right. But I, I thought there was some unfamiliar imaging in there, some unfamiliar pictures. I don't know. We'll have to watch I, it again afterwards. Yeah. I don't know. Well, Kevin <laughs> wakes up in a bathtub naked, and he's in a hotel room, a shoebox, if you will. The TV startles him and then shuts back off. Right. So. Then he saw the know first who you are and then adorn yourself accordingly. And that was a plaque on the closet door. And there was a priest's. Is that what it was? It looked like a Jewish thing for it some reason. It could have been a Jewish priest. It was a, some sort of a priest outfit. Some sort of a, right. A guilty remnant outfit. An all white, right. A suit. And, and a Mapleton the, police. The Mapleton police uniform, right. Yeah. So his face was just dripping with water. Like, he's in a hotel room by himself. There was another towel. He could have easily, like, dried off a little bit. So that was bothering you? Yes. <laughs> because, like, he was in he's the He's always closet. wet. But he, he was... Every single... But he was in the closet. He's or he's wet. He, was, he hasn't... There hasn't been, like, a dry, clean image of him yet until this episode. But it, go ahead. It, it was just, just dripping always off sweaty his face. Dirt, like, blood, what? or somebody's beat him up, and he's got a cut on his lip somewhere, somehow. Nobody gets dressed with lips. with water still actively yes, dripping does. off your face. Yes, yes. Only Jack in the, one Jack of the last episode. Jack in the absolutely gets dressed like that. <laughs> he did it, like, three times throughout the series, didn't he? Uh, the guy out of the shower just put his shirt on. Nobody does that! Yeah, so he, he puts on the suit... And then there's a knock at the door. And it's, Do you think that's a Damon Lindelof thing? I'm sorry, I'm still trailing what? off on the putting your shirt on with <laughs> still getting wet. Oh, maybe he just. <laughs> I mean, he's like, he's like, you know what? Don't dry off. Yeah. Just put your he's shirt like, on. But I don't. That's uncomfortable. I don't want to do that. But just just for the scene, don't dry off. Like we'll come back in and keep getting wa sprinkling water on you because right. I don't think it's physically possible with how long his hair is for that long after getting out of the bathtub for him to still be actively dripping water down his face. I mean, face. but if he didn't dry his hair off, yes, possibly. This is an innate... This is, come on, let's not have this discussion. <laughs> Moving on. We haven't even gotten to the slide. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we did. We got we to did. the slide. We did. We did. We did get he, to the slide. But. There's a no so then there's a knock at the door after he puts on the suit. Flowers for Mr. Harvey. He says it's Garvey. I beg to differ. It's Harvey. You know, and then the dude uh, just says like, "No, you're not." Yeah, it's like, what, "What? What? Oh, okay. Thanks. You need to tell me my name. All right, well, fuck you then." Yeah. You know? uh, the guy comes in the room as Kevin looks for cash to tip him, and he finds only euros in his wallet. Right N now, do they? Where do they use euros at? Is is that strictly and specifically only Europe? You know, I'm not sure. That's not a question I know the answer to. No, I know. I don't. I didn't bother to look I it up either. I think it's any but, of the like the the countries that like are like Australia. No. Yay. Yeah. No, I mean he drives to Texas later on in the episode. Yeah, but I don't think, I don't think place and time is relevant where he was at. True enough. In the sense that either it's I don't know we'll get to that part of I mean, the whole thing. I'm just like following. This, I have a feeling this is going to be a long podcast. I have a hard. T I, I'm having a hard time, and here it is. I don't know how. I don't know how to let go that it's that it's a different world than ours, because it's it's not the it's not the world from Lost. It's not our real world, and those are the two things that I'm using to base logic on. And like set precedent for how things work, and like I have to just admit right now, I don't know how things work in this world. I no. don't understand yet. They're holding no. back some information. They're absolutely holding that back I don't know. And I, I, very right. But I'm because we had we, we had a very me. very <laughs> long conversation last week about the supernatural versus yeah. not supernatural. And but I was almost we were, biasing we that on my get, own. Shit. And if we were going to get to see it, yeah. 
And oh no, I was absolutely wrong. We got to see exactly what they cut to after that. Basically, I thought I thought I was gonna be. I thought there was no way because we were gonna go into like a dream state for like this for reasons. I didn't stated. think so either. I really didn't think the show was gonna go that way because yeah. it hasn't. And again, not because it bothers me, but because then it it it's sort of if you're too taken at face value, then that means that the, the after something exists, after, yes, something beyond what we live every day exists. Right. Now, I think you could take that as read in that world, though, because of the the sudden departure. That's that's the that's it. That's the only. So that person who I, I can't remember whose comment it was something about I don't know if you were reading on Reddit or whatever they said that the. The, the departure would be the only supernatural event on the show. Yeah, is that still stand true? I, I mean, I don't think. I don't so. know who to credit that to. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Uh, I, I don't think so because this episode clearly has supernatural elements in it. I mean, there's there's no scenario on, aside from supernatural where somebody gets buried and then wakes then cr- crawls out of a dirt but, hole but like does and does something that takes like it completes a com- uh, like a, a chain of events that completely takes place in his mind that's what we that's what happened right I they know. weren't on another plane of reality this took place in his mind and he was defeating his adversary yeah but that felt like his dad that's a see now. That's another discussion when we get to that point. Yeah. His dad. I'm sorry. Him I was just talking about because it in his dad general. even said something about. Oh, I, I'm in the same room. Yeah, okay, we'll get there. Well, yeah, we have to get there. Okay, okay so just, sorry. Right. Um, but yeah, this like I said, this. So is the guy awful. comes in, attacks him with a knife. Garvey whoops his ass and smashes his I head mean, into the sink. I mean, there was no sink. kung fu involved in there. That was a street fight. Dude. I know, but it was pretty... I, but, I wasn't yeah, the meaning. Way he ended it pretty good, though. Yeah. Freaking just slam his face. So he got his hand cut, time. right? His right hand? It seemed like it. Did he stop the knife or something with it? Or? Yeah, he grabbed it. Or, okay. I don't, and the guy okay. pulled it out and it just cut his yeah. hand. So he wrapped it up uh, and then he puts a do not disturb sign on the door, which I think there's some significance to because uh, they went to it the fat time guy across the hall... Did the same thing. Right. Um, so he goes to the elevator, and then it's flashing, indicating he should use the stairs. There's a fire, is what it's saying, right? Isn't that the fire alarm? Right. And that kept going on until he finished talking to his dad, who had a fucking fire going in the background of his room. Right. So it was some sort of it was, connection it was, there. It was that. Yeah, that so was, maybe, do you, maybe he was connecting with him. Maybe his dad was the guide, and not Virgil. In some way, I don't know. Just a thought, because it just seemed it seemed too obvious. It all seemed some of the, the the overarching idea of this episode seemed really obvious. He's gonna have to defeat Patty. Right. He's gonna actually go into some purgatory like world and defeat his adversary. Like it seemed, and then he's gonna crawl out of the hole. We, I mean, we basically said that exactly. But the intricacies of it are far more complex than I could have ever imagined. The inside, like him being inside of this thing. Yeah, it was way, way, way. It was really fucking crazy. It, I mean, dude. So, what a game changer episode, though. So, this, But it feels... Why? Why is it... Well, I mean, because it does. It, with the whole supernatural realm or whatever it is that we saw on this other side of this death or whatever it might be heaven hell purgatory whatever you want to call it what is it is this where those people went is this in any real way related to the Every, departure people there said they had died I mean, like i said it's a game changer it, it, it brings about 10 times more questions than we already had about the show this okay. one episode does that you, you don't agree with me i i don't i i saw this thing on twitter before i watched the episode but all it said was wow what a twist and then I watched the episode and I waited for the twist and I didn't see. I think no, they meant the came. whole thing though, like overall <laughs> of the episode, because of the, all the questions we had leading up to this point. Is it real? We saw him die. Was it in the last episode? We saw him drink the poison. Well, maybe and die. maybe he didn't. Maybe that's. Are we? Which, I have which a different world theory on what which, that might be. A different theory on see, what he wasn't, was given. It wasn't a poison that killed him. He it was gave a, him that God's tongue. Okay, and then maybe he, him, and the his, shit dad that his dad ended talked up about connecting, connecting via that, or, via this. So now, what is this plane of existence then? What is this? I mean, that could be in that. I keep in, I see realm is the only in, like in that instance. It would be his trip. It would be his mind, and then, so then he physically so, just came out of the ground. Well, that I get. Yeah. So he wasn't actually dead then. 
is a theory. It's a theory. Is what it's an option of how it could play out. Okay. It's possible that uh, that he did. He was killed and blah 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 because we'll get but to now, that okay, very so soon. Is, is Virgil, so he's go- is Virgil really dead? Well, he's going down the stairs when the light's flashing because the they won't let him he's go in the Virgil elevator. Really what a stupid question. Yes, he's yes, dead. he's dead. Uh, he walks down the stairs and there's a little girl by the pool, standing on the edge of the pool. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a bird loose in the hotel, and the staff are commenting on it as Kevin walks by. And that just, it was just like, could this be more obvious? Like, right away to me, it was like, it's the bird, he's in the box. It's the box. This is the box. This is exactly. the shoe box. The, 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 he, he was, and he's been buried under the ground. You're yeah. exactly right. It's just, that's, I didn't really think of it like that, but that's a, that's a very, very good It was metaphor. just like, immediately, he's, the, that's a fucking bird, come on. And then I was like, so you, is this are you like disappointed that they like? I, I'm only disappointed because I got that preconceived notion of something was there was going to be a big twist, and like while there were many so if twists you look in at the it episode, like, the, like just it being the whole overall I, episode, I shouldn't have. I sh- I didn't intend to see anything. I don't uh, like going into stuff with, with big, preconceived notions like and that. And AB texted me last night was like w- best episode of Leftovers ever, and I'm like, ah, oh, god damn it! Why do people do that? So that was before you watched it? That was before I watched it. Yeah, don't it. do that. I don't want... I, I just see, want to I, watch you know an episode with no that. expectations. I did that to you when we first started doing this a couple of times, and then you explained we had this conversation, yeah. so I don't do that anymore, and I completely understand why. Yeah. I don't want people to do that to me either. Because then I'm like, okay, my expectations yes, are super high. Yes, and then high. I'm pumped, right. So I'm watching this whole episode going, okay, I'm not buying this part. No, I don't buy it. I don't believe that this thing is actually happening the way that they're saying it's happening. Like, I'm questioning the whole I mean, episode. I think, they, I, I think that they went a little heavy-handed and obviously it was obviously a dream i don't think they were trying to fool you there no i know i don't think they were trying to fool you into believing that that it was reality i, I think some they, parts here i made notes for it out of the the cold water like yeah there's other shows that have used that same yeah th- i don't think they were trying you know, to like, be necessarily like subtle like the bathtub and like going underwater is a like conduit between worlds yeah you know what i mean like that can be you know like seen that way between dreaming and reality you know what i'm saying you wake up in the movie inception they use that uh, cold water to like wake you up and bring you back you know what i'm saying it was it's just a a thing that's used in that kind of sense yeah. when, when it's like waking up from well one because water realm or one reality you know water is pure or whatever reality. yes right Mm-hmm. Um, he's at the front desk and he asks who Except sent flowers water pure because they weren't supposed to drink the water yeah so was the water bad inside of this Reality? What did the water do inside of this? I reality? think the water inside of this reality accept- meant you were there. You just accepted being there and yeah. that you were part of. Which, which I'm, I am confused about. Sorry to keep interrupting you, dude. Go ahead. Uh, it's fun. It's a good episode. We, it was, I know but, I'm excited about it because it I thought it yeah. was really good. I was glued the whole time. So the front desk lady says all the deliveries go through the concierge, and of course that's Virgil. Uh, Kevin approaches as if Virgil knows him, and he replies that the fire alarm went off and there's a bird in the building. Kevin asks where they are, and he's like, are you a guest here? Uh, it was fucking cracking me up at that point, the way he was just prote- acting like he didn't know anything about uh-huh. it. And Kevin says, no, I took poison in your trailer. You know me. Right. <laughs> and he writes the name of a professional who can help him, and it says parking lot or parking garage five minutes. And then as the bird flies over his head, and... Uh, he says, I hope they don't catch the bird. Right. Who said that? Was that Virgil or was that uh, Kevin? I, I would assume it was Virgil as he had just written I that think thing. it was Virgil that said that. But then he ended up catching the... He ended up squashing the bird later. Killing the bird later. I wonder why he... Because he was... Wasn't he lost at that point? Did he kill the bird? Wasn't who Hadn't lost? he drank the water at that point? Oh, okay. It was that like, might be you know what I mean? Is. Like, he was just like, because he, at that point, he talked to Kevin and was like, okay. What? So, like, drinking the water there, like. So, is this, is this, let's go, let's ride, dive right into this thing then. Is this where the birds go when they get put in the box and then they they don't make it back if people, if people there, if everybody buys into, I mean, or do you think this is so a one off? brings about one question, though, to me. Okay. Like I said, if this one, took place... One? That's it? Just one? Well, it brings okay. about... Uh, Tell me your one, one question. question. <laughs> <laughs> this brings about a, a question at this point. Now, is this something that took place in his head, or is this existence something that more than one people can go to? Okay, my question's already answered, because he talked Other to his dad. Other people can go there. 
but he talked to his dad. So he was in like a say a purgatory kind of thing. What are we gonna refer to it as? I don't understand. I don't know what to do, how to. It's the hotel for now. The hotel. Okay. All right. for, for now, it's 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 this hotel. It's the shoebox in, the in shoe reality. Box. All right, that's a good way. Okay. That's um, a good way to think about okay, the so. Yeah, and I, I just asked that question. Okay, so Kevin sees the girl floating in the pool, and he dives in to save her. Now, the music is all floaty and Disney-like. It really, like... Weird. I mean, I loved it, Yeah. but it was such a different vibe from how music has sounded on this show prior. Like the Fantasia kind it, of... It made me think of Disney. Fanta like like just Fantasia and Mickey Mouse with the magic hat on, waving the wand and making the mops dance and shit. Yeah, I... I yeah, almost. It just weird. I, I really enjoyed it. The, it's almost bird-like. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if it is from Fantasia. It's not. It's Nabucco Hebrew Slaves Chorus is the it's name of not Disney. <laughs> no. no, not Disney. Correct. Are you going to continue to play that through the rest of our episode? I mean, it's only five minutes, so I wouldn't play the whole time. Anyway, anyway, through the through the beginning part here, I'll just pause it. Okay, let's see. So he does he CPRs her, saves her, and some guy starts yelling at the girl like an asshole. Right. And it's just like, what the fuck? I told you you can't swim. It's like, hey, back off. Right. So. Okay, Kevin goes to the parking garage, and then there's two women uh, arguing in scrubs. And that was... I don't think they were in white yet. I think it was just regular scrubs. And then the lights are flickering, which seem to keep happening in this episode. Okay. Uh, a car flashes its lights at him, and he gets in, and it's Virgil. He's like, why are you wet? And he's like, don't drink the water. Yet. Did you say yet? Yeah. And I was like, okay. So well, he explained to him. He's like, there was a girl drowning in the pool, and I jumped in. Didn't he say, say why he was wet? He yeah, I think to him, so. Right? Okay. Uh, but he just then asked then him the, if he drank the water. Did you drink any? Right. Okay. Yeah. Don't drink it yet. Okay. And then he said, "Where are they?" And then he's like, "Someone tried to kill me." And he goes, "Oh." He's like, "What? What do you mean? Oh?" Right. <laughs> he's like, "Oh, it makes sense. It's a pitfall of your occupational hazard." Or, uh, of your chosen occupation. Right. He's like, which is what? He goes, well, the way you're dressed, you're an international assassin. <laughs> it's just <laughs> fucking hilarious. Why is that hilarious? <laughs> because all he did is put on a suit, and now he's an international assassin. Like, that was the choices. It was, do I want to be a cop? Do I want to be a guilty remnant? Do I want to oh, be so in the religion? The and Or I'm a fucking international assassin. That, those, so would his reaction choice? have been different had he chosen a different outfit? I then? think he chose all the outfits. I think we only followed the perspective of one. Of one of those iterations. Okay. It's not like this place would seemingly conform to the laws of time and space. Right. So there's no reason it couldn't be happening simultaneously with all outcomes. Absolutely. Because the the guy that got walked past him with the bag over his head was absolutely him. He was wearing a fucking Mapleton PD jacket. I mean, it was him. Right. Okay. A, a so, him that failed that part of it. And was in cuffs and... The, so, like, he just failed the outcome of that. Yeah, whatever, whatever that, whatever that was. scenario would have been. Because mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have been an assassin with the gun in the toilet to go get her. Correct. He would have been something different at that point. He would have been a cop. He would have been a cop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's pretty interesting to think that about is where that would go. to think about to see where it would go. Or even the, the priest in the, in the Guilty Remnant. Yeah. To see Priest it Kevin. It was good to get, uh, what's her name back? Uh, Gladys. Gladys. That yeah. was cool. Um, so let's she looked see. a lot different than she did. Yeah, she was blonde and yeah. her hair was done yeah. nice and she just spoke. You know, yeah. that always helps. Um, let's see. So he's like, is that why you checked into the hotel? And he's like, I didn't check in. He's like, I drank the shit and woke up in a bathtub. <laughs> so, okay, Kevin, stop thinking in such straight lines because she won't be. Patty. Patty, yes. She thinks in spirals, helixes, zigzags, and circles. And he's like, Patty? Yeah, my, t my target. Or your target. So she will be here in a couple hours. Her campaign is for president. 
is like he's he's registered under Kevin Harvey and he donated to her campaign, which guarantees him a meet and greet. They will call him from his room to hers, search him for weapons, then he will ask to use the, the washroom. In the tank of the toilet is a gun and a silencer. Do not hesitate in killing her. She will try and deceive you. And uh, you will be delivered from this place and it'll all be over and you can go home. So that sounds a lot like, again, sorry, lost spoilers are going to be happening on this show from time to time. Season six, when he tells him, do not let him speak to you. If you do, it'll be too late. When he's talking about Man in Black or Man in Lock at that point. Okay. To Saeed, he said, just plunge it through his chest, don't let him speak to you. Right. It feels like that same kind of thing. Like, if they get to talk to you, then they're going to just, they're going to convince you. So do you think that it all, uh, I don't know, is it, did he do what he was supposed to do? Or did he get manipulated? It's hard to say. Right? Because the body double thing was a manipulation. Well, yeah, okay. So it, Harvey, I'm, gun and toilet, etc., like the Godfather. Uh, and he's like, do not hesitate. Uh, and he's like, wait a minute, how are you here? <laughs> and he's like, I, no. Um, Virgil, he was asking Virgil, he's like, wait a minute, how are you here? Yeah. Uh, he's like, ah, I'm atoning. And uh, some guilty remnants pull up in the garage as Virgil tells him not to leave his room. And he's like, don't let them see you. Uh, and then more of that, more of that music. Um, he grabs some boxes from the car and we see the sign on the closet door again. Right. So I, I imagined he was going to put on a, pick a different outfit and try, at that point. When like, he opened it, and it was another suit. It was just another suit. And then there's dramatic that music was the, as he that steps was the one over he had the corpse. chosen at that point. It, yeah. Okay. He's now in that one. He's in that. He right. picked one of four paths. paths. It's that community episode. It's the rolling the, the dice. The remedial chaos theory yeah. episode. Yes. It's okay. that. Okay. Okay. If that helps anybody understand I get it. it any better. I get it. Yeah. So, um,. And then I was just like, at this point, as this this music's playing and everything, and I'm just like, again, waiting for a non-existent twist. Can we get to the part where none of this actually happened, please? Like, I was just wait. I was waiting for some reveal. See, you got. I, I think that sucks. That, right? that that happened to you because I I, I didn't go into this episode with anything. Because I really awesome. the episode is fucking amazing. It was I'm really s- really good. I have not had this much knowledge about the whole episode in a while. Where I remembered so many details right. about it. It was a very engaging episode. I mean, seriously, it like, was definitely one of the. Top well, it was episodes. one of those things that yeah, because it takes you out of. Well, Depressionville for one thing. For that, and it just takes you out of the whole that whole realm. Like it takes you into a different like. It's like okay, whoa, we're not where we normally are here. So like, and you're and then you're totally paying super close attention. And okay, I'm just thinking through it. There's no possibility that they're like going to a different time, like in that regard, like to the future. No, I don't. Because when so. they went to Gar or to Jarden later with like the fire on the bridge. Like, none of that felt a little more post apocalyptic than, you know, say, present day Jarden. Just a thought. I don't think that's the case. I was just wanting to cover all the bases. Maybe just a different, re- like I said, a different time and place, a parallel different reality. Something. I don't know. That, you know what I'm saying? That it went wrong. Because like the, they were talking like the, about Maybe it. the campers got tired of it and they just went in and took the place, you know what I mean? You know, knocked the fences down and, and you know what I mean? And, yeah. Well, uh, the wall at slash door looks cracked in the broken mirror, which reminded me of season one poster, where he was like punching, punching through the wall. the wall. Well, that was where he'd fought the guy. I know, right. but just that they chose that shot. Yeah. So I figured there might like be something were, yeah, to that it. Yeah, a good. Yeah. It looks like the walls wrecked behind him, not so much the mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so he looks in the card with the flowers, and it says "Get well soon," which. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. I didn't even notice the... Like, Look at they, the well. Yeah, I know. They didn't even show it till afterwards. I didn't... That's awesome. But get well soon. Get to get, the well yeah, soon. Yeah, get right. there soon. Genius. And toss her in. Yeah, and just like the way that the well looks, it's, it's exactly all... like the same. It's a, it's a picture of the well that was there, yeah. yeah good stuff. So where is this well? What do you is mean? It, you didn't the, see where it, well? the, so it, where was, it like was? So it was like on the... It was right off of the wi- the. So fucking... does it really exist? The I, well, I mean, dude, is it? It's exciting in the sense that it feels like this is tied to, um, 
that woman from the opening? Yes, absolutely. Because maybe that was part of the thing that caved in. Okay. Remember that she yeah. was a cave in. So, but would they be? And that feels so much like Lost, wealth? doesn't it? Well, I, I'm, the I'm well sitting there watching in? it. And all I can think about is like, oh my god, Joel's just lost in it up right here <laughs> with this whole fucking episode. Well, I mean, come on, though, yeah. right? Like right. that was fucking cool. Yeah. So I mean, I'm so torn because I want to be fully on board with this show, but so I'm, I don't know. There's certain things that like I don't, I don't know that. Like I'm trying to figure stuff out, okay? Okay. So I don't necessarily enjoy the idea that we're never going to find out some of these things. Unless we eventually get rounded out with enough information that, like Lost, I can educated, make an educated guess to fill in the gaps, because I'm fine with that one. Like, the where, where everything was left knowledge-wise, like, right. I'm good. I would love to see more, but I don't need more right. to, to be happy with the show. <laughs> So like I'm just I I, I want to trust that we're gonna get to that same place with this, but I'm just not there yet, you know, to where I can go. Well, oh yeah, well, this part's definitely this. In, were you at that point with no. Lost two seasons? Of course in? not. Absolutely not. No. No. Of course not. Not at all. So yes, I would just ride with it because, man, this is a this and, is oh it's a, fucking riveting I mean, television. Absolutely fantastic. And I don't know how he cries so much. I genuinely don't know what. <laughs> What is, his, get... what is his trigger? Like, what is he Windex thinking about? Windex to the fucking eyeballs. <laughs> okay, fair That's enough. That's the trigger. <laughs> well, he's still in the room. The TV freaks out again. I bumped the desk. Sorry about that. The TV freaks out again. And um, so at this point, I'm like, okay, so what is trying to communicate with him that is coming through as the TV static? And then you hear motherfucking fire. And then as, as they show footage of presumably the hotel burning, hence the fire alarm earlier. I don't know. This is all the things I was thinking at that time. Okay. Um, so, But motherfucking fire, that was clearly his dad in retrospect right. saying that. Yeah. I would think so, right? Right. Um, the alarm goes off and he leaves his room and sees the fat guy with the little girl going into their room. And he says it's a false alarm. And he's like, eh, if not, we'll burn. Right. Um. Kevin goes uh, goes outside and walks right past the guilty remnants, who he was told specifically to I, stay away yes, from. Yes, absolutely. Had the same thought watching it. Like, wow, he just walked right past those people that, that yeah. told him not to walk and let them see you. Yeah. So he walked past a nurse who was speaking in Spanish, and I was just, like, listening for any words that I might recognize, and Corazon was in there. So she was talking about a heart in that box. So did you look it up at all, or do you just know that word? In Spanish. Yeah, I know that word in Spanish, okay. yeah. But, so, presumably, there's a couple options here. One, it's something to do with Kevin, because his heart was what stopped from the poison. Okay. So maybe that was about him, and, you know, she was trying to rush to save him or something. Or, she's there doing a fantastical mission of her own. Instead of being own, an international it, spy, she's a fucking nurse who's trying to save somebody's life and give them their, uh, I don't know why the, that shut their off. Their transplant. So, so then that, 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 so then that answers my question from earlier. Is this something that's specific to him or is this a realm that more than one person can go to? Well, it seems to be that either they just populated it really well well, because you got to think about Neil, the guy who he interacted with. Okay. He he had known about him through Lori. Yeah. So, you know, Lori could have shown him a picture or described him. You know what I mean? Okay. Patty he's seen. Gail he had seen. Holy Wayne he'd met. But not all those... The the random people that were out, out in the courtyard yeah, but those when they the evacuated... When they evacuated the hotel... The, the, the guilty remnant, those could all be people that he's seen before. The lady with the heart? Could be. So, okay, so you're yeah. you're proposing him building him... He's still he, that, building well, this I'm world. just saying that he, like... Because this was specific to him, that he, that he, that he didn't... That, you're okay. playing the Lori side of the thing here. That's you're taking going, place in his head. Okay. I'm not... I'm not just for I'm the not sake taking of that. one side or the other. Yeah, but I'm not for the saying sake which of, one is. Uh, I'm not saying absolutely which way or the other because I gotta, have no idea. We got to talk idea. through all of it though. Just we seriously, case, we yeah. do. So, like, if it takes place in his head, what ramifications does do that have? What? Well, why it, does it, 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 what it makes it different from the other side of it? The well, there's a couple things that make that a little harder to believe, and that is him crawling out of the fucking ground. 
because presumably that was three days later. We're going to find out. That's the same out. thing I was thinking of. Through that so that's one thing. Um, his dad interacting with him. If that was in his head, that's fucked up that his dad made it into his head. Okay, so that's another thing I could say that it's a it's a plane of existence that multiple people that like it's like a purgatory, like a that that you can like he said his dad found him and found a way to communicate with him via this TV and, and interaction. Because he even said you're in the same hotel and it was like a mirror image of the hotel room that he was in. That's why. Except there was like some weird like Indian like Australian like tribe dudes like passed out behind him. That's why I'm like, thinking that the that the there's no time and place where they are like in this okay. in this hotel so maybe it was a hotel like because here. because i think he was in australia i think he was in perth like during this i think that's where that's located because that's where his dad said he was right but then he took out a map virgil took out a map and showed him like where to get to jordan yeah you're 50 miles oh come on they're gonna comment on our review they're gonna review yawn, and sorry, yeah, yeah, yawn. I mean, don't no, no yawning no burping yawning, right <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. So a bellhop has some It's a Boy balloon and gift basket, and Kevin asks if it's for him, and he's like, is your name Mary jo- uh, Mary Jameson? So you know what? There you go. You're, the further we talk about it, the more you're answering my question. There she is. Yeah, there's Mary with her, her baby. With her baby boy, though. That's not good. Her baby boy's there with her in death. See, but how do we know this is necessarily I'm death, I'm just though? saying based because on... Because she's still alive in the other is in, she, in our world. Is she alive? She really? came back, according to Matt. Hmm. Hmm. So this doesn't make you believe that more? No. That she came back? Her, him seeing her awake and uh, accepting flowers and stuff like that? I still think that why would she be right up for sex? First thing out of the coma. <laughs> I don't think that makes sense. Because that was the purpose, was to get pregnant. Okay, so I understand what you mean there, though. That's okay. That doesn't seem like a good thing that her her son. Yeah, would that be the there son with. would be there with her right. if this is a death place or whatever. Because you know the the fat guy ends up saying that he's dead, but again, we're just taking his word for it, so to speak. Right? We're not. And Neil's not. And Neil isn't dead in our in the outside of the shoebox. Because she went and delivered the shit to the front door. Or was that in a flashback? That was in season one. I don't remember. That was, a, was that a flashback? I don't know that she like killed him or anything. Or maybe he disappeared. Oh, I don't think she killed him. Did he depart? We don't know that. I don't think we know that, do we? Oh, Echo, knock it off. Whining. Uh, I don't know. He found... Oh, man, see, that's... Let's see. Yeah. I, I apologize. If, if you know, if anybody knows those details, please let us know. Because uh, I don't... Did Because that was... A, was that a flashback where she... It was. I think it was a flashback. Well, yeah, because she talked. Or didn't they she? were talking with... with, with uh, she was trying to recruit Lori at that point, wasn't she? Yeah. I think so. And then she went to the, to the to his house and put... So that might have been a flashback that she did that. So Neil could possibly be dead. Okay. Echo, stop I'm not saying that it. she killed him, but maybe he did depart, or maybe he did die. I, we don't know. I, I, we have to go, we have to look up that information because that's kind of need to know that now. Yeah. All right. Well, so he's he's following the bellhop to Mary's room, and then a gun is put to his head by a guy in a white suit, and he asks if he's Kevin Harvey, and they fight into an elevator where more people in white suits punch him, and then he wakes up locked in locked in a chair. So Handcuffed that was chair. roughly when handcuffed. I still to a chair. I still didn't realize. No? Yeah. Handcuffed. Oh, yeah, yeah nice. Handcuffed to the bed. Fair. Good call. Okay. I didn't put that together. Okay. I, I, was trying to, I was trying to figure out why they were all dressed in white suits, because I didn't quite understand yet what was going on. I, d- I thought that it was an alternate thing where, like, they weren't guilty remnants, and, like, that didn't exist. But they were the guilty remnants. But they remnant. were that. And she was running for president yeah. as the leader of the guilty remnants. Yeah, which yeah. was really yeah. Anyway, let's see. So Gladys comes in, smugly. and apparently gaining traction in this little yeah. reality. But that could be to becoming president of his head, you know, becoming president of this whole purgatory. You know, is that her? Like, did he yeah, stop her know. from like taking over the whole thing? Well, I think it was either him or her in this at reality. that point. But see, how did that? How would that affect everybody else? But that wasn't even her, reality? so that wouldn't matter, right? Uh, Gladys comes in smugly with some machinery and says hello. She works with Senator Levin. 
and then she plugs in a red light bulb and they need to vet anyone who gets close to her so they need to make sure he belongs here uh, he says his name is Kevin Harvey, and the light goes off, and the guy sprays something into his eyes. You said it was Windex. Windex. It looked like Windex. Like he was just spraying like household cleaner into his fucking eyeballs. So he <laughs> he donated. He says his real name, and then he says, "Oh, oh, you donated fifty grand, the same amount Matt needed to save the church, right? Uh, and expects to be in the same room as her." Okay. Uh, does he smoke? Yes. Why? He says he smokes because he's addicted to nicotine. More eye spray. Right. Uh, well, right. Red light bulb smoke? goes off, it gets more Windex to the eyeball. He smokes to remember that the world ended. So he's a guilty remnant then, in essence? Because that's why they smoke. Right? Does he just say that to gain... He wasn't lying. No, he wasn't. So, I mean... I mean, to be he fair, share, he may, may, be... may not be a full guilty remnant, but might share... He shares that maybe share that with them. That's share kind that. of what he was, what Patty was talking to him about later. Then, when she was saying why people might want to assassinate her, right? Okay. So, anyways, they uncuff him. Uh, she offers him. They'd some, rather uh, yeah. I was just gonna, die than know than than or rather kill me, put a bullet to my brain than know my truth. Yeah. Um. They uncuff him, and then pa- uh, Gladys offers him some water, asking if he's thirsty, and he says no, and the light goes off, and nobody noticed. Luckily. He said no, he wasn't thirsty, and then the light like dang the as they light. were un as they were uh, you know unbuckling him or whatever, and they're thankful for his support. He's rinsing his eyes in his room, and the TV goes crazy again, and it sounds like his dad saying same fucking room, and it is his dad sitting on the end of a bed looking into the camera, TV, whatever, and he says it worked, which I love when people say things like that. That just, again, you just, just have no idea what's going on. Oh, it worked. It what worked? worked? Wait, what? What worked? No, we have. We're not going to get an answer to that quick question. Uh, he's in Probably. Perth. They are in the same room. He says his is. He's fucked up on God's tongue, and again, this must be what Kevin was given by Virgil. I think. Okay. So he really hopes this is real. Makes a lot of sense. He sent the flowers, and the card didn't. Wasn't supposed to say. Uh, get well soon. It was supposed to say, get to the well. Get to the well soon. And that's when I was thinking, is his dad the guide? Instead of Virgil. Instead of Virgil. Well, I mean, his he ended up doing what his dad told him. Not he did both, but just his thought. dad ended up being more more integral to, fi- to finalizing fi- it, finishing the the uh, the quest or whatever it might have been inside yeah. of this inside of this realm or inside of the shoebox. Yep. Okay. Let's see. Uh, take her to the well. The fire alarm goes off again. The two rooms must be tied together, and that's why the alarm keeps going off. I, it has to be. Uh, there seems to be a fire in Kevin's dad rooms. Uh, Kevin's dad's room. He tells one of the painted people in the room to wake the fuck up, asshole. There's a fire. But it sounded like he, at some point, realized that the fire was the bridge. Well, yes, because he told Which, the guy, "Don't put it out." It was yet, on I'm the not, bridge I'm still later. Talking. It was literally on the bridge later. Fire. Oh wow! <laughs> it's a fire and water episode. Yeah. Okay. And I Earth. Think- you know, it's an element episode, you might say. There you go. Fire, water. Yeah. Wakes up in the water, the fire, right. The so, fire guides him. Kevin says he's supposed to assassinate her, and he's like, you're no assassin. And he tells the guy behind him not to put it out because he's still talking to him. Uh, I, I wrote down, so so far there there has been fire, which seems to allow communication between worlds, and water, which is not to be drunk. Right. Um, he has to take her to the well. He has to be strong. He says he loves him. The fire goes out and the TV goes off. Uh, knock, knock. Senator Eleven is ready to see him. Uh, the guilty remnant are her cronies in this reality, basically, is what we've established. Right. Uh, yeah, they just transfer the cult to... A political party, to, basically. Yeah, which, he walks past someone with a bag on, on their head, leaving the room he's going into. And he's wearing the Mapleton police jacket. Yes, and I, that's what I had written multiple realities slash iterations of all his choices playing out. Uh, more light flickering. Mm-hmm. That seems to keep happening everywhere. He walks into like this war room, you know, like they have in movies where for the political war room. Right. And uh, the guy tells him to make like Jesus, which you could interpret what you want from that because he woke up three days later and was reborn. Okay. Uh, he pats he him down. real funny, and then he goes... Yep, and then he pats him down, and he congratulates him. Did you catch why? 
No. Because he's got a big package. Oh. oh. He's like, Congra- congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't catch that. Yeah. So, somebody said, I, I was looking for any any mentions of that on Reddit, and people said there was some sweatpants scene in season one that gave the same Im- indication that I'm not particularly aware of, and okay. I wasn't going to Google sweatpants scene from season one of Leftovers. <laughs> you don't know what you give you type in exactly. sweatpants scene inside of a log and inside of Google. So yeah, the, guy, the guy gets all up in his face, and he's like, what happened to your hand? He's like, cut it. Did you put Neosporin on it? Yeah. <laughs> he's all clear he's harmless so Gladys is in the room she apologizes and they shake on they shake on it being water under the bridge again water water under the bridge which the fire I mean come on the, wow. the fire on okay. the bridge now there's water under it what's is this a bridge to heaven and hell uh, water under fire I don't okay. know you can talk to her for uh, everything's upside down if the water's under it and the fire's over it, everything's fucking flipped upside down in this world. Why? Because heaven and hell are up, are reversed. Just a fucking okay. weird... So you're saying water would be heaven and the fire would be hell? Well, yeah, okay. I mean, water's um, not going to be hell. Okay. I mean. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Just a thought that they're physically positioned in this world. Water under the bridge, fire over it, flip it, the whole world's upside down. Maybe just a little... Okay. So anyway, they uh, she says you can talk to her for about five minutes about anything but North Korea, gun control, abortion, or Neil. Uh, they say she says the photo will be over here, and then uses a bunch of like gunshot lingo. She's like, "Don't blink when the flash goes off. The senator will give you one shot. We'll only give you one shot. Don't right. blink." And it felt very much like you better fucking take that shot the second you get it. So he asks to use the restroom, and Holy Wayne is on the toilet. Yeah, seriously. What are some, like, can I get some privacy? Occupied, mate. Yeah, can I get some privacy? He comes out and uh, asks, and again, they again ask if he's thirsty. Uh, and Holy, and holy and, Wayne, does he totally holy creep the fuck out again already? I mean, yep. Jesus. Wayne comes out and says, I know you, don't I? And uh, Wayne takes a glass of water and says he felt like he was on the toilet the last time they met. Right, and, but he's and he's like... Sipping the water. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, th- and he says that's deja vu. It's the mind. It's, or it's the mind taking an, an experience you are having in the present moment and mistaking it for a memory. That felt relevant to this somehow. Maybe, maybe just the Patty connection that he's taking. You know, stuff that's well. It almost feels the reverse. He's taking memories and making them as if they're present. Okay. Kevin is anyway. Right. Uh, he says you cannot trust the mind, and Kevin tries to go into the bathroom again, but Patty shows up. Says it's nice to meet you, Kevin. Uh, would she like water? And she's like, never touch the stuff. So right. she's resisting, or at least putting on the front that she's resisting drinking the water. Right. She apologizes for the security, but someone is trying to assassinate her. And him being an international assassin, doesn't this does this make it an international hotel? See, they keep saying international, so that it makes more Perth? sense that they'd be in Perth in, in Australia. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Why would, a U.S. senator running for president would be there is, I mean, like, it's not weird. They didn't say U.S. They just said running for president. Okay. Um, she asked why someone would want to do that, and he's, he's like, I don't know. And she goes, it's because I stick to you, Kevin. Which, obviously, she's been sticking to him the whole season. Right. Uh, assassins throughout history have been motiva- motivated by beliefs, not money or revenge. The targets embody a belief that enraged the assass- assassin. Secretly, they share the belief. So she's talking about Kevin sharing a little bit of what she's into. And that's why he wants to kill her. Because he believes... Because he sort of believes it, too. He said it earlier with the with cigarettes. The, the I cigarette. smoked I was just going to go back to that. I smoked yeah. to remember the world ended. So <laughs> he does share a little bit of their belief, and maybe like more so in his heart than yeah. he wants to let on. Well, John Wilkes Booth hated slavery and loved black people. She asks him again, why would someone want to kill her? Because they'd rather put a bullet in my head than accept my truth. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what's her truth? 
he's the and she's like you're the one who wrote me a check for 50 grand what do you think it is and he's like you want to destroy families and she's like oh that's the fucking greatest thing ever that's exactly write that down right <laughs> uh the poll says their message the polls say their message is confusing you just nailed it i want to destroy families so um she said in north northboro ottawa where there was a guy who just handed her a baby and walked away. And I don't know, I was just massive. I was typing it, so I wrote no for Northboro, Ottawa. Uh, I didn't know if that would have any relevance to anything, but it didn't appear to. So Okay. Uh, the baby is now in an orphanage, and it's going to be fine. It's going to grow up and not be able to attach to people or give or show love, but that's no longer a difficulty. It's a strength. Because of October the 14th, attachment and love became extinct. So... This is now presuming that we're in the world, or she believes that we're in the world, or she's trying to convince him that we're in the regular world. The regular world. Because October, the departure still so happened. So he said, if you talk to her, she'll try to deceive you. Okay, that makes sense. Virgil told him that. So, yeah. So she says, she says this, our cave collapsed. Finally, a fucking connection to the opening of the show. Right. Of this season. Okay. The cave collapsing. We can spend time digging through the rubble, looking for signs of life, or we can transform. So that has to be relevant to that cave scene. At the beginning of the the very beginning of the season. How did she transform? How did anything transform because of that? How I'm just curious, you know, you got, can you make any connection there that I'm missing? Well, maybe that the a, a more a more advanced person maybe it wasn't just like a, 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 a somebody like the same tribe of cave people that came and picked the baby up at yeah. the beginning of it maybe it was a more advanced tribe i see so then okay. she took the baby to and, and, and again an orphan maybe it did it went and it was fine it grew yeah. up in a and okay. transformed into oh, okay. a, you know a, you know a, a different tribe instead of because they seemed like they had nothing basically. so that was her departure too yeah. attachment and love became extinct she died off because she was attached and loved that baby right and then it and then it was taken off by somebody else right okay so that was the transformation so she's being persuasive and she asks how he heard about the guilty remnant uh, he tells her that his wife left him and joined up and she says that must have been painful and he goes ah no more painful than when Neil left you and Gladys interjects, and Patty's like, uh, Wayne, shoot this motherfucker in the face for me. And it was like, holy shit, this just got amped up. That's right. awesome. And then he walked up like he was going to fucking do it. Oh, he real. was going to he do it. He was totally about to do it. But he didn't. She was kidding. Right. Uh, her donors have been warned not to use she that was like, name. Hey, but fuck Neil. I, let's, she's like, I don't give a shit about Neil. People. I don't give don't a give shit a about shit. Neil. He gave lots of shits. Right. Well, received technically. Right. Right on his chest. <laughs> Um, so she says, let's do the photo. He goes to the bathroom and grabs the gun and silencer. He coughs to cock the gun. Uh, he comes out and shoots Wayne and Gladys. Patty says she's not Patty Levin. She's Rhonda Gennaro from Lowell, Massachusetts. They found her on Facebook and she like slips into a Boston accent. Right. She says she had plastic surgery to look more like her and she's a double a decoy. Please don't kill her. And then... The Disney music starts again, and he kills her. He says, goodbye, Patty. Yeah, goodbye, Patty. And he shoots her. Uh, he closes his eyes, hoping to, hoping to wake up at yeah. this point. And he goes to the concierge desk, asking why he's still there. And he's like, why isn't it over? Um, he asks if he's sick of meeting in parking garages. You know, can't we just talk about this here? And Virgil seems confused. Still where? And then this is where the bird flutters and lands on his desk and he kills it and everyone claps. So he's, yeah, he says, did you drink the water? He's like, I was so thirsty. But he seemed like he, when he said that to him, he seemed like he kind of came back just a little bit. Like he was just like. Well, he, I mean, you mean in the sense of remembering a little bit. Right. Yeah, that he wasn't supposed to drink the water. Right. But I was so thirsty. You know. Kevin gets into the elevator with a religious guy and. His hand isn't cut anymore after he removes the bandage. So, the uh, the religious guy, that has to be some connection to the other outfit. Wasn't he wearing the same outfit? So maybe that's another person on another mission. No, because it was white. 
Kevin's was all white. No, the priest outfit in the in the in the. Yeah, he might have been somebody else on another mission too. I was just saying some connection in the sense to remind us that he could have been the no, priest. No, I'm talking about the priest outfit with the purple like. Whose was that? Was that the guy that was that, in the elevator? No, that was Kevin's. Okay. There was the priest outfit, then the white outfit, yeah. and the suit. But the, the guy in the elevator, his was like orange and stuff, is what I'm saying. It wasn't the same outfit. It wasn't this. That's what I'm asking. It wasn't the no. same one that was in the closet. Okay. No. All so right. he, but but I feel like they were just trying to tease us with, look, see, we saw the other guy with the cop outfit on, and we didn't show his face, so it could have been anybody, right? But right. The, you know, just to like tease us with it, I don't know. So but maybe it's probably this somebody, the, else somebody else doing their like, own so thing. So it could be like the nurse. That's assuming that anybody else would have the same choices. Right. Um, let's see. So his well, hand he was, isn't and the, cut And the guy anymore. in the level here was crying. Was he? Yeah. The priest was crying. Okay. Or whatever. Wh- whoever he was. The, guy that, the religious guy in the elevator. He was crying. Okay. When Kevin got in the elevator with him. So... Why would he be crying? Why would he be crying? So, like you said before, the nurse could have been like on her own mission. Is this another guy on his own mission? Or you, you know, maybe you just tied it together. Maybe the person never got their heart and he had to say the last rites. That could be a connection too. And so, but see, why is all this taking place inside of a hotel? I don't could, know. Because it's because it's in a dreamland. Because or whatever, it's a right? shoebox. Because <laughs> it's inside of a shoebox. <laughs> so I keep his hand to refer to it like that. His hand isn't cut anymore. Right? He takes the thing off, and then somebody pointed this out. HBO fatty noted uh, the carpet. From another hotel. Okay. Just the pattern. That's the that shining. Any... You see the, the, the shining carpet pattern? pattern? Okay. That's the same pattern. I mean, yeah. it doesn't have the little dot in it, but it's the same kind Outline. of back and forth. Okay. I didn't. There wasn't a whole lot of room to fit more of it, but you could What's definitely that, a hexagon? see hexagon? Yeah, it's like stuff. a hexagon with the, ch- the part going, yeah. Okay. Just kind of a neat little connection to, to an old movie. A little shining action. So uh, the fat guy's drinking in the hallway because the little girl locked him out. The do not disturb sign is on his door. And he's locked out too. They share a drink, which I thought was interesting. There's fucking water and alcohol. Kevin shared a drink. With he was thirsty. I don't know if there's water and alcohol. What? What do you mean you don't know that there's every I liquid has water in that's it? That's not necessarily true. What do you mean? It doesn't, if it ferments alcohol, it ferments alcohol. I don't think there's water in it, dude. Does, isn't the liquid, isn't like mm. the basis of it H2O? Mm. I don't think so. Fuck, now I gotta look that up. Yeah. Whiskey's whiskey, dude. <sighs> Is there water in alcohol? In whiskey, because they were drinking whiskey. Let's see what Siri says. Checking my sources. Here is what I found. Sorry about the dead silence. Google, is there water in alcohol? Searching Google for water and alcohol. Let's see what we got here. I just thought it was interesting that he took a drink there, but it was alcohol, so does that sort of cancel it out? I don't know. Uh that doesn't help. I don't have time to look that up now. Anyway, uh, the fat guy doesn't think they would let him drink. No way Kevin is. Uh, he's Oh, because he's an international, assans, an international assassin. He's like, I, w- I wouldn't think they'd let you drink. And he's like, ah, my, I'm done for the day. And done I was just like, no way he's done for the day. I just kept expecting something to fucking right. fuck this up. Like, it's going relatively smoothly. Well, at this point, you're only about halfway through the episode. Yeah. Um, let's see. His target was a body. Was using a body double. Uh, a little over halfway, but yeah. I the mean, fat guy doesn't do anything. He's dead, and he choked on a piece of chicken. Half the people can't remember their own name, and the other half are running around doing crazy shit. Like international assassins. Yeah, exactly. Kind of like laughs at him. Yeah. Yeah. So Neil can't find, and he can't find a single woman to take a dump on him. The little girl is not the daughter, is she? And then the music starts playing again. Uh, let's see. And he says that he saved the girl from the pool. And he's like, he should have let the fat cunt drown. Right. And so, baby Patty. And it was like, fuck, was, is that what he was supposed to do? Was he supposed to just let her drown? Would that have gotten rid of her? 
Maybe it was a test, like a, a, a test from Patty to see if he would save her or not, you know? Or she knew he would, like, well, running th- there like I a hero. I think that he... I think that this was not Patty. I think that it was him, and I think he needed Patty, n- not the opposite way. Okay. I think he conjured her because he couldn't let go of what happened at the cabin. Okay, so that but that brings about the issue, so then this all takes place in his head. It. I don't know. Or is this Patty's actual ghost that's attached herself? To I him? think here's what I think. Can what I w- will say definitively, one way or the other. Kevin and his dad actually spoke. Yes. That I will say. I will agree with I, you I there. I think that definitively Whatever plane that of reality that they're on, they communicated. They actually communicated. Yes. Although it would be hilarious if when they saw him, his dad's like, what are you talking about? And then it's like, I'm oh, just fucking with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> TV, through the TV yeah. thing. Yeah, same room. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So, Kevin kills Neil like an assassin would via neck break. Yeah. And then the music starts again, and he knocks on, and the girl opens the door. I'm not sure if that's going to be good listening, man. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think people are going to enjoy that. Uh, uh, with a sign that says, I need to keep my mouth shut. She had that written on her, which Kevin has said to her many times. To Patty, yes. right. I, you talk too much, right. Yeah, yeah which you need, you need to keep, to keep your, mouth. your mouth shut. Right. Would you shut your fucking mouth? Right. Uh, they say hi, and Kevin takes off the sign, and then she's like, are we leaving now? And he thinks he knows where they're going. Uh, the music playing in the lobby. Virgil asks if he can help them, and they're looking for a well. So here's the 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 rack of things. So we have City View. We have, what does that one say up there? Tour. The top left one, something Beauty. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Lost Pines. Explore the mysteries of the lo- of Lost Pines. Maybe something to do with the woods that he woke up in. Okay. Uh, and then Orphan Well. Orphan's right. Well is where, in Jarden, Texas. What about, like, by bike? Something about bike. And then the West and the Ancient something or other. What does that one say? Something Let's rides? Let's tour the West. The Ancient. Blah, blah. We didn't get to see that. Yeah. Okay. You never know. Right. Uh, something's going to mean something in this fucking show. Okay. Uh, if they head out, they can make it there by sunrise. And Patty's like, he's going to throw me in. Yeah. <laughs> and Virgil's like, well, then you better have your bathing suit on. Yeah, right? Like, he's just playing it all cash, yeah. too, and everything. Uh, they drive as Patty reads the brochure. More Disney music. I, I liked that shot of them walking hand in hand. Uh, for the arrival of European explorers, the land we now know as Texas was populated by the tribes of indigenous people, right. natives. Mm-hmm. The Orphan's Well outside Jarden was built by one of these tribes. According to ancient legend, the well formed a conduit between the world of the living and the spirit world. And then she's like, am I talking too much? Yeah. Uh, her dad thinks she talks too much. Uh, he pushed her down the stairs once, and she broke two of her grown-up teeth. Like, Jesus Christ. Uh, for centuries, people have made pilgrimages to the well to toss in things they want to unburden themselves of. So they arrive outside Jarden in the dark, and it's all abandoned, and there's a fire on the bridge. And then, again, the fire, water, bridge thing. Right. Um, there's no water going under that bridge, though. No. No, I was just meaning the water under the bridge. Okay. N- n- you know, the word that she said. Right. Uh, it looks different. Like, it looks totally different than how it does regularly. Well, yeah, it's like there's no fat. With see, what the, it looks like, what fire. it looked like to me is that the camp, like, just they went crazy and broke in. And just, like, looted the place almost. Like, you know what I'm saying? It just, yeah. you know. But there would be somebody at the gate. You, I know, think. but it just, yeah. like, that's what it looked like to me. Like, because the camp was all abandoned. Yeah. You know, like, there was nobody staying out there anymore. Like, okay. Who, like, it looked like something bad had happened there. Like, as, as if, like, somebody found out that it wasn't. The miracle that everybody thought it was, and then you know, it, they, it looked they a little post-apocalyptic. Yes, yeah, post-apocalyptic. That's, exactly that's, right. like, yeah. that's the best way we can put that. Yeah. So um, he he says he's not scared, and Patty starts making chicken noises, and then his window's broken open, and someone puts a noose over his neck and asks him what he's doing with the girl. Um, he tells him he's going to throw her in, and he's like, "Is the girl resisting?" And he's like, "No, that's beca-, and he's like, "That's because she wants you to do that." Right. 
uh, she thinks she can improve you. And he's like, I don't understand. And that seems to be a recurring theme with Kevin. He doesn't quite understand. Just doesn't what's understand. Going on. Right. So who the fuck could this guy be? Right. Could he be like the, I mean, I keep, the only people we know have gone into things like that are like the guy on the tower. Um, Virgil. That's who I initially thought it was. The guy it's like, the, oh, the guy in the, the tower. Is, Maybe, but, right? It's possible. We haven't necessarily seen that guy up close. He's had a crazy beard. and Yeah, but that, so I don't think it was him. So who, right, who is this guy? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, he has a choice. He can cross or he can jump. He's like, why would I jump? And he's like, because you don't want to kill a child. And uh, he's like, yeah, I, I do. <laughs> She's not a child. Or Oh What's yeah, that? she's not a child. Yes, uh, if if you do it, it'll change you. And that reminded me a lot of like the Richard Ben stuff okay. that we just saw. Where like, oh, if you do this, it's going to change him forever. Okay. Uh, he says none of this is real, and he's like, yeah, this is more real than it's ever been. The other guy tells him, I don't necessarily, be- I don't know. You know, uh, that again, I keep waiting for there to be like something where they pull the rug out from under you and go. Yes, it was real. No, it wasn't. Like, but again, I think. See, I, I think what this I'm curious show lives in ambiguity, so I don't think we're what, ever going to get it. What was this place that he went to? Is this where the departed went? I was, I was thinking about. It, I was kind of zoning off there so. for a second. I was thinking about it. Like all the people that he interacted with, yeah, were dead. Okay. Besides his father. Okay. And maybe so, those, and we don't out know, and we ha- we haven't confirmed men. Neil, but I'm betting you Neil's dead, and I bet you that's how he died. He choked on a fucking chicken bone, whatever it was, choked on a piece of chicken. Yeah, her Patty's actual husband Neil. Okay, so so that means, but that's we, not departure. That's, that's people not, dying. So, so okay, so that's what I'm getting at. So is this? So this is a different. This could be a different place. I don't think this okay. is where their depart where the departed, departed people went. go. Okay, so. Um, I want to call her Gail, but it's not Gail. It's um, Gladys. Gladys. She's dead. Gladys is Patty. dead. Patty. Patty's dead, yeah. Neil. Potentially. Potentially. Holy Wayne. Dead. Right? Yep. Who else did we? Did he? Virgil. Virgil, dead. Dead. Um, I mean, I'm talking about the main people he interacted with. The bird. With. <laughs> dead. Right. Not, not like... Like the guy he killed, like the, you know what I'm saying, or or to, to yeah, the people gu- from the guilty before. remnants. But it was all the main people, like the main people, the people that he spoke with, were all are all dead yeah. in the sh- in in outside of the, the real box. world, right? Yeah. Okay. So, like, is this some sort of purgatory or some sort of way? Right? Is it separate? Like, where did the part of the go? Like, is this like well, then so the people it's that cool. are not drinking water are holding off before accepting it and. Right, you know, maybe then they can move on. I mean, it feels a lot like Kevin's just his whole arc is he needs to let go. Right, it feels very lostish in that regard too. So let's see. Um, he takes the noose off and throws the rope over over the side, and he asks how far the well is, and the guy's like over a mile. Um, and then they whisper while Patty sits in the car, and that's the first shot that we get from Patty's point of view, the whole episode really. The okay. first thing that wasn't like first person with Kevin. Okay. You know, like everything right. else had been from his him him as if it's all him, all in his head, so to speak. So this shot, what does that mean? Is that confirming that it's not, or is that just fucking with us? See, I think we've confirmed that it's not just in his head by the fact that he communicated with his dad. No, because if they're on drugs, they could maybe... Yeah, but... So the, there would still have to be some common denominator between them, which would be this plane of existence. Okay. This shoebox, per se. Yeah. You know? So that would be the common, you know what I mean, like, ground that they met on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, ha- it would have to be something. Like, another plane of consciousness. Even if it's that, can other people go there? Like, apparently they can, because you said that. That's the only thing we can say definitively. Oh, Mary's there. And she's not dead in real life. But... Sort of is. Sort of is. So, it's got to be some sort of purgatory, some sort of some sort of in between. Yeah, because Patty's waiting to move on, and he kills Neil in the purgatory thing. He kills Wayne and Gladys too, and Patty. Yeah, he kills all of them. Okay. Well, so now is this is the third time that he's watched Patty die. 
if you count the the body double. Yeah. He watched her stab herself in the neck, shot her in the head, and then well, he drowned. watched the girl die in the pool. Well, he didn't watch her die. He saved well, he her. He saved her, right. but she was dead, technically. Okay. <laughs> because she, yeah, cause he had to give her CPR. Yeah. Or mouth to mouth, whatever you want to call it. So I'm curious what the man whispered to him. Um, Me too, definitely. Kevin takes her hand and they walk, and Patty's tired, so Kevin carries her. That felt symbolic of something. I don't know what exactly. So he finds the well. It's near the watering hole. In Jarden, which right. is not surprising. So is this the orphan? So this is the orphan's well that we're at now. Yes, he walks up to. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we can see that the water hole is just off to the left there. Right. So the maybe spring. like just up there is where the car was. You know where they pulled up and right where the he other was side of it, or yeah. over here somewhere. Or yeah, something somewhere like that. within gotcha. eye shot, I would think. Okay. It feels that like sense. that's what they were. Or implying. no, because it looks like a river comes down. Into a pool of water here, so it would be over here somewhere. Maybe, maybe. But so, but the point Regardless, being, right. point being that like this water source ties into this now, ties into the wells is, water. Okay, true enough. But did we see this well in outside of the shoebox? No, because of the the earthquake. I'm thinking that was that fell because of the earthquake. I'm saying it's okay. a literal tie to that cave in. Oh. Of the um, what's her name? Like that was that thing must have fallen at the beginning, at the very beginning of the okay. season. Okay, okay. So you're just saying it's not there? Like nobody I don't in, think, outside of the shoebox have seen? Has I seen don't think so. As well. okay. Yeah. All right. So um, it's near the watering hole, which now has water again. Which is if not you can see. Yeah. Which there's not regular. Uh, Patty asks how he wants to do it. Do you want to drop or push or? <laughs> and uh, I just keep thinking that she, she's going to be persuasive. Remember that she'll be persuasive. Uh, Kevin says it's hard because he feels sorry for her. Would it I help thought that she... was like a key line. What? Like the way when he, when he said that, because I feel sorry for you. Yeah. Like. He feels sorry for himself. He doesn't feel sorry for her. I mean, he may in some way. But he but does this is about in some him. way feel sorry for her. Yeah. Because he does share part of that belief like yeah. we discussed earlier. Um, she asked if it would help if she closed her eyes or say that she deserves it. And she's saying all the terrible things people have said to her. Um, would it help if, and then he shoves her in and then sits down and we hear a bird in the sky, which right. was that the same, like sound from the, you know, that lady at the very beginning, I, there was a fucking bird screech or something like that. It was almost like a hawk. Like yeah, so, it, it rem oh, yeah. I, I think it was the same thing. Anyway, okay. uh, he cries, of course, and then Patty starts saying, "Help, please, Kevin." And why would he go in? I mean, what the? That's the job. So he falls in and goes under the water. She wasn't dead, and he like he didn't, he, he didn't drink it, right? He still didn't drink it, even no. when he went under there. Um, she asks if he's okay. Patty asks if she ever told him she was on Jeopardy. Her plan was to win fifty grand, the same amount Kevin donated, the same amount Matt needed for the church. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how much she needed to leave Neil to, and to start over. She needed something that was hers. She needed to win the fifty grand. So getting into Final Jeopardy, she had or going into it, she had seven grand. And Stewart said nothing to her in the green room before they went out. The guy that was the champion, right? And she said there was power to his silence. So that was where she got the idea for the guilty remnants, I think. Okay, that makes sense. That's that a she good. She was connection. like, "Holy shit! I needed something that was mine, and that was power." The That's way that science. guy didn't say anything to me that made and, him so much more that, powerful. I'll tell than you me. what that does. That part of their, the way that they behave, that does give them power. Yeah. In some instances. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, let's see. So she says, "Big countries in in the area that." The largest, or in area, the largest former Soviet Republic after Russia and the largest nation that doesn't border an ocean, which is Kazakhstan. Correct. She was always good at geography, she says. Now, I thought that was weird because I saw this this morning on the front page of Reddit. Kazakhstan is the home to many nice people, including Borat. The first person to stand in your best Borat voice say, I am Borat. I like you. Very nice. We'll receive three bonus points. <laughs> Somebody got that on their uh, um, test. That was the thing. And they said somebody actually did stand up and do it. 
and got three. The first more. person to stand and yeah. Yeah. Just in class. Just stand up Hell after yeah. you and just do the That's a cool teacher. Yeah. So okay, so we're back to the well. That's a teacher that's that's from that's our age. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like that just got the job a little while ago. Yep. Stewart said, What is the Ukraine? Oh, the fucking Ukraine. She laughs. Uh, Patty Levin is the new Jeopardy champion. She won nights two and three. The fourth night she bombed, but kept everything before that. $65,000. $300. $65,300. More than she more than she needed to leave Neil and start over, but she didn't. She's scared. And I'm just like, she's being persuasive here. She's getting what she wants out of you. He hugs her uh, like an idiot hugs her she could have done anything i mean i guess she I, she could have killed him potentially i don't see why that wasn't a possibility because yeah. the dude tried at the beginning and cut him like well, he i mean was he bleeding. killed neil so why couldn't she kill him exactly uh he, then he drowns her and cries and i'm just at this point i'm like i'm not buying this again i kept waiting for something to fucking go boom it was th- oh it was that the whole time and you saw some like oh, old ancient like jason horror movie where she pops up out of the water and, like yeah. grabs him and, no that wasn't gonna happen <laughs> no i just mean no. i wasn't buying this whole world that we were in i was okay. i was thinking okay well how are they gonna pull the rug out from underneath this and go oh he was <gasps> you know he wakes you know like some way That's they were exactly gonna cheat what they their, did i know it is essentially what they did isn't it yeah you were you got somebody ruined it for you right whoever the fuck that was ruined it for yeah. you and then uh a b sending you a text but i mean i don't disagree with what he said in his text yeah one of the best but to send you that stuff. before that's, well, but he watched it, so he probably assumed I did already. I, I don't I think imagine it was malicious. That. So, no, 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 no. That's yeah. not what I'm saying in any yeah. way, shape, or form. The AB was trying to ruin it yeah. for you. But the one you said, well, what a twist. Like, that's... that's and again, come that on. was on me, though. I for was reading it. I accidentally I know. opened Twitter, and I'm like, oh, fuck. I can't. Oh. I can't do Twitter. Right. Especially not, not the How to Watch TV account. All that is is people that talk about leftovers. Right. So I'm like, fuck. No. I'm yeah, like, so oh, what a twist. And I, So I was waiting for a specific twist. Not so much the idea the of whole, the whole episode, episode being, being a twist, and which it was because I was absolutely wrong last week. We, I thought for certain we're never gonna fucking go to this. We're never it, gonna it, it's see. It's exactly what we said. It was we're not gonna go to this, and that's exactly what we went to. We went to the other plane of existence, yep. to, to the inside of his mind, or purgatory, or the shoebox, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, we it did exactly the opposite of what we were saying. Yeah. That we weren't gonna see. So he cries, an earthquake begins, and we hear the same that bird thing again. Yeah. Uh, the ca- the well caves in, and he comes out of the ground in the woods like the bird. Right. And Michael finds him and says, "Holy shit!" Yeah, yeah, we get it. Kevin's Jesus. He's the savior of Patty and was reborn. Blah blah. Um, that's all pretty obvious. After three days, we're gonna yeah. find that out in the next yeah, episode absolutely. that he was buried for three days. So, because that was why. That's why Michael's reaction was, "Holy shit!" Yeah. But he'd been sitting there waiting, watching. Yeah. You know. So. Th- is that the dog? Yes. The the last <laughs> thing here, the Australian TV report. Remember it? Resurrection. That's the claim in Australia as witnesses described a man previously believed dead emerging from a cave in Water, Wanerloo, Wanerloo, outside of the city of Perth. Australia, dude, the witness. Um, walked, out, walked out covered in mozzie bites, said he'd just been in a hotel. The man identified as David Burton. TV shuts off. Did they show a picture of him at all? I don't think so. They were talking to a witness, somebody that had seen it, and he said he said he just he'd just been in a hotel. Did they ever show a picture of the dude from Australia that they've talked about? Did they ever show him in a news clipping? David or Burton? No, I don't think so. I don't think we've seen him yet. We let's saw double the, check on that because we, we saw because the newspaper here's the only reason thing. I ask. Okay. Is it Kevin? Like, uh, no, because this, like, like seriously, okay, <laughs> could be the dude in the elevator that was crying. Why? For some reason, was he I think we've seen that guy. Was he Australian? I, I'm talking about the guy that, that they talked about came out of the cave. I think we've seen him in a news clipping quickly somewhere. We saw a news clipping about biblical winds in Australia. That was the only news clipping that we, there I, was when but... they talked about the guy being resurrected. That was on the radio. It was on the TV. That's what I'm saying. So we didn't see. It. Are you no, sure? I'm positive. There, I would have seen something. Okay. Well, let's let's. But I, I'm a, so, I'm who a, are you thinking that he is? The the religious guy in the elevator. But there was no. It was. Be, that's not. Anything in this world seemingly doesn't matter anymore now. 
anything in the world of the hotel. I mean, except for the fact that this guy, if this guy was in the hotel too, then that's a place. The, in, that's what so, I'm saying. Maybe he was in the hotel so, with the elevator. With, so they with, just with. took the fucking ballsy move of saying, in our world, there is some sort of something. Afterlife. There's something. Not Maybe not anything you've ever thought of, but there's something after, in between here and death and right real here. death and... Yeah, you know something like that, and wh- fine. I'm cool with them taking that ballsy of a move. I like it. Yeah, because this episode I was fucking it, awesome. It, it was fucking awesome. It was really good. Cool. I, dude, like seriously, like I know I'm probably gonna be wrong about that, but what that religious dude that he got in the elevator with? I bet you is David Burton. David Burton. Hmm. Interesting that it almost sounds like Burton. Like releasing the burden, getting the burden off you, dumping your burden. Could the girls be trapped in the well somehow? Possible? Because nobody would know it's there? I don't know. Could they, maybe that when the water, when the water went in, like the water got sucked down or whatever, maybe they did end up in a cave or something under there. Yeah. And are in, or, or are just, in the well. Isn't it interesting to th- again lost ish the the idea of the well and the the it's all the same water. So Kevin through this experience in the shoebox okay. knows about this well that's been covered up for however long and may, people may not know about it in Jarden finds the girls. In the well? In the well, because of his experience in the... in the. I don't know that we're going to see the girls again. That's but true. That, that could be true, too. Another but thing... That's not, I mean, I'm just... I'm shoot. I'm throwing yeah. out... I'm throwing out theories. The, I'm throwing out a suggestion. He here. saw their... I'm not sticking by any one of them. I'm just throwing out yeah. ideas of what could possibly he happen. He saw their uh, their white car in this... in the ho- Or by the hotel. He did? Yeah. The white car that the girls drove off in, it was in the the hotel stuff. Like somewhere in there, you so saw. So could they it. be stuck in the shoebox as well? I mean, that would imply that they're dead. But he came back from the shoebox per se. So did the bird. Why can't they? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they don't have a guide to get them back. Maybe they don't know Maybe what their purpose is. Maybe he needs to be their guide. Who, Virgil? Maybe Kevin needs to be their guide or figures out some way. I don't to, think he. You think or, he goes back? I don't know about... I'm just thinking about that now. It doesn't necessarily make sense for him to go back. But maybe he, through this experience, somehow has gained a new understanding or new ability. And maybe he can communicate back and forth through, Hmm. you know, like his dad did. You know, maybe he can can talk to people on this side or, you know what I mean, on the shoebox side. I'm calling it the shoebox because that's the easiest way to refer to it. Well, yeah, the shoebox hotel. The shoebox hotel. (laughs) Okay. I want a t-shirt that says I stayed at the shoebox hotel. Right. <laughs> and then the back is just like you with just dust out, blowing out, out of your of the, mouth. Like crawling out of the ground like a zombie. Dust just pouring out of right. your mouth. I don't know. It is, it is despite it seemingly having relatively low ratings, it's one of the best shows on TV. It does have low ratings. I mean, huh? it's on HBO. HBO doesn't generally give a shit about ratings, which is good. Right. And it's got the best critical reception. I mean, there was a 10 out there's been lots of 10 out of 10s for that episode. I mean, it was awesome. Dude. It was it, the international this whole season has really been fantastic. Well, I mean, it's weird because like again, I don't know what this show is. Well, and now we really don't because of what... I mean, this opens up a whole... Like I said, it, I, now well, do you, you agree thoughts... with me? Now do you agree with me when I say that this was a game-changing episode? It changes the whole dynamic of this series. Well, I still didn't know what it was even prior to this episode. Well, no. I, and I'm not saying that we, still, that we know it now. I'm just saying this episode changed things about this show. It does in a sense, I guess, because if we're to believe that the shoebox is real... If the, if the if the hotel thing is real, and then the man from that's what I, the connection I was trying to make with the guy from Australia, saying that he had been in a hotel when he was reborn after three days. So the guy like, in the elevator. Well, but oh, you're saying if if it's the same hotel, I right. see that being wh- why you're saying that because I because I, that's what I was getting lost at thinking. Well, he's not going to go back there to see this guy. So you're saying that, but that happened while before he went to the hotel. That happened before Kevin died, because we heard that a couple episodes ago. 
But I still do like the idea that he that that guy could have been in there. But I think that already happened because you that's said, what made already, his dad you, go. You said yourself. You said yourself. Huh. Time and space doesn't matter in this Oh, fair box. enough. You said that yourself. So, so even so, though he might already be back, it could be happening he, concurrently he, with Kevin's right. potentially. Yeah, I was just I mean, thinking that's what possible. That's what got his dad box. to go to Australia. Was this guy? Right? Was the guy coming back I to really life? Don't, I'm, I'm, I don't. So like that already happened. In I almost essence, gotta go yeah. through and like watch again now because I want to say that they showed that guy. They hmm. showed like a brief little glimpse of him on the screen or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just wishful thinking now, like wanting to be right about that. Yeah. But I mean, it, it, it necessarily it, does, it couldn't necessarily be a huge connection. But like seriously, that would be really really cool. Yeah. Like, why else would they say that he'd been to a hotel? And he was a religious guy, right? And he was in Perth. And, and he was in Perth. It, he was in the fucking elevator with Kevin crying, dude. Like, come Fine. on. That's Jeremy's, come on. that's Jeremy's crazy theory of the week. <laughs> we'll be back next week because... This is how the world No, I'm going to just play it. Shh. I was just so going like, to say, see, I was letting it, it go as if it were playing. You got to sing. No, I'm not fucking sing. singing it to your you lips. Sing it up to my lips. Because... Now. This is how to watch TV. See you later. My mind, 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 my mind,